Good morning everyone, it's Rachel here and we are going to work on our butterfly. So I um, said I had, what did I say? Oh yes, I had um, put the wire on last week and I was going to embroider them all together but then I decided I'm going to do something else. So I'm going to just very carefully, I'm leaving a little bit of an edge so I don't cut my stitches. Not that it really matters. Um, I'm just cutting them out. But see, I'm leaving a little edge there. And um, and then I'm going to cover them with this beautiful embroidery. Now, I've already done some because I wanted to test it out. So this is the last one I have to do, but then I'll show you the others. So what I want to do is just decide... I want to keep that flower, but I think I want these blue. So that one... Yeah, I think those flowers. So I'm just going to... I'm going to cut across here actually so I know where that is and keep that because that can go somewhere else on something else okay and then I need to carefully cut here because I want to keep those blue flowers as well for something else these scissors are a bit silly oh there we go now they're going okay and this was this a very big one that had another beautiful flower that I don't know where I put it with um, you'll see the other bits. Some of you will have, um, you'll have this in your, when you bought the embroidery packs. Now you want to leave an edge because I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to wrap it round. I wanted to do so many different types of butterflies. It was really hard to decide what, how I wanted to finish them off. But then I decided to go with this because it looked really nice and, um, I was chatting to mum and she's like, yes, yes, do that. So that's what I went with. And let me see if I can find a needle that I want to use. That's a Milner's needle. I don't want that one. Um, this one here. And I won't be, and then I'll pin it to my page so you can see. Um, but I don't, I won't be stitching it on until I've done my embroidery because it's going to be not fully stitched down. Let me just see here. Maybe bring it up a little bit. Um, it's not going to be fully stitched down, so um, it'll get in my way when I'm embroidering. So we might start the embroidery afterwards. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, first of all, do the invisible stitch just a little bit to hold my fabric in place so it doesn't slide about. And I also really like the look of it because it looks... Um, Makes it look a little bit quilted. Not totally invisible, but you know what I mean. So just do a few rows of that. Sometimes it's just a step that's not to be missed. So I quite often get asked why I don't use a hoop. I do use a hoop sometimes. Um, I, if my fabric is more, I tend to use a hoop probably more if my fabric is more flimsy. Like that fabric is flimsy, but because my embroidery is on the edge, I know I could attach, I could tack on a piece of fabric and then remove it. And, and, you know, then I could put it in the hoop, but I, can't, I don't, I don't know, I just don't do that. Mum does it sometimes. Um, so I just sort of hold it taut between my two fingers um, when I need to, where it's flimsy. Other, uh, most of the, where I'm going to be embroidering there will be flimsy, except for one little bit. Um, yeah, just, it's just because of the positioning of the flowers, I probably would choose not to use a hoop. And a hoop does slow me down a little bit too, and I don't, I don't like that bit. Like it's like thimbles using thimbles, they, they slow me down. I only use them if I have to. Okay, so now there are some bits that I haven't left. 
very much but what I do is I just go around here and put little stitches all the way around the wing not too far apart because you don't you want to catch all your you want to catch your fabric I'm doing them a bit closer together here because my I don't have as much fabric around the back because I didn't I didn't have that much room to leave a huge amount. I do think vintage embroideries are very useful for this sort of thing. Oh, wrong, wrong way. If I'm not liking the look of it, I'll come back and do another stitch. If I feel like it's not all stitched down properly. I'm not in a hurry, we've got plenty of time. All month to finish it. Oh, a little birdie flew by my window. Little birdies remind me of Pam. She loves birds. She knows all of the birds. She knows so many birds. So it does take a minute to get around. I've only been here for eight minutes. Okay, I've got to make sure I've got my little curve in the wing there. I can't believe we're nearly, you know, um, if I think about it, next week is the last week for the block. Is that correct? And then the week after we're doing our extra week because it's still March. Can you believe how quickly the time goes? And see, I can bend these wings because they've got wire in them. I can bend them as I like. So it won't matter if they flatten in the book. When I open the page, I can jiggle them about and... Isn't that pretty? 
see how it takes shape. And I like the fact that it's on the felt. It looks quilted. Okay. So I'll just end that off. And we'll have a look what how I'm going to position them on my thing. Right there. But as I said, I'm not going to stitch them on yet. I've got some. Here's my wings. Okay, they're all from the one embroidery, but different parts of the embroidery. Can you see? Well, I lift you up a little bit. Just a second. Don't get seasick. I'm just going to lift you up a little bit. You can see better. Okay. And then I'll move you back down. Are we in focus? Yes. Right. So this is the bottom wing. So I can I can pin them on. Oh, dear. I can pin them on like a specimen. So let's put this one on first. I, can't, I don't want to cover that up. So I want that there. And I want this wing to sort of peekaboo from underneath. So I look, I can do, I can just stick it in. I haven't decided if I might, I mean, I could decide to put little beads in here. I might decide to do that. I don't know. I might not. I might forget that I even said that. That wing can come over the edge and that's going to be my butterfly. I'm still deciding about the center. There we go. Whoops. Stick it in. There we go. That's going to be my butterfly. I might turn it a bit more that way sort of thing, but that's going to bring, I might bring it down a bit. I don't know. That's going to be my butterfly. Okay, so now I need to do this embroidery here. So I might leave the butterfly there for a minute and we'll pull out some threads. And I did find I had a pouch here too with some more threads in that I, I found. This pouch was given in this beautiful journal that um, Sue from Paper Inspirations um, made for me quite a long time ago now. And I found my other scissors and I found all these threads in there cheeky isn't it oh and i found my other thimble and the, oh here's another one of these oh it's just like christmas i could i didn't know i had all this stuff in there okay um so anyway i was going to use i don't know why i pulled those out i'm not using those threads i'm using appleton wools i said i think so but i am happy to find these lovely little scissors now let's see Let's just get the Appleton walls. Any walls in there? No. And there are some woolly sort of ones in here as well. Oops. Okay. Are there any more woolly ones anywhere else? No, they're silks. I never use those. I should use the silks. They're lovely. There's a few woolly ones in here, I think, are there? Or did I move them all out? They're my ribbons. We haven't done any ribbon. I think I might go into the ribbons next month. There's a few wool, Appleton walls here too. Let's pull those out. I don't want those in there because I'll forget it. Oh, they're wools. These are DMC ones. I can tell by the difference in thickness. Hi, Lulu. Paper my small paper cutter yes i will get it for you okay thank you say hello to everybody hello okay small paper cutter here it is there you thank go thank you very much bye bye <laughs> see ya wouldn't want to be ya just joking of course i would Okay, so what colours? I don't. I don't think I want reds. So I probably didn't need to pull those out. That's a bit of a more of a raspberry red. I could use that one, but not these orangey reds. Although I do have orangey red there, but I don't have it in the fabric. But I do like this yellow. Okay, let's see. I don't know. What colours will I use? I don't think I'm going to venture into the purples. I'm probably going to use pinks, blues, and greens. Probably that's probably the direction I'm going to go in. So let's pull some out and see. I like that one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. You like this one. Let's see this one. They're so chunky. I don't like that one so much. 
not so much. This one is better, it's a bit brighter. I don't know if I want to go really bright. I might. That one's a bit more salmon sort of colour. It is actually quite nice. I think what that's one from my mum. Feels a bit different. It might not be an Appleton, that one. Um, I probably won't use that's more of a ready red. I won't use that one. Um, I did have this one. I, I do like this one. I love that. See, that's close to that. I like that. Um, it's a bit hard, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'll stick with the pinks, greens, and blues. I won't. I won't pull out my and yellows. I have some yellows as well. Let me see in here. I think these are a few. They're sort of woolly ones. I don't know what they are. I don't. I can't even remember where I got them. I don't. They like I've got this sort of thing, but that would actually be pretty. I'll keep that's a bit more cotton, but it looks like wool texture. Does that make sense? That's an apple. No, that's a DMC one. That one will pu pull that out. I'll probably keep them in a little basket and carry them around with me. Love these colours. Love those colours. I'm just going to pull out a whole lot, as you can see, and um, and then I can just decide as I go. That's a, a tapestry wool, but I like that. And there's another tapestry wool. Wool. wool, wool. Um and I like that one too. I'll just go pull them all out and then we can pick and choose. Okay, I think I can get started now. I think I pulled out enough. And then the other uh, the other container has um oh I know what I need. Where's the box? I need my threader. I probably need my threader. I forgot about that. Okay. Now I have had this very unattractive box flying around for such a long time and my goal has been I need to bring you back down again I forgot down you come there we go and I'll move this over like that okay um yeah I've had this um and I've been wanting to cover it for a really long time and I've never done it I'm just going to grab this one out I've got my threader over here where is it I need to put those other threads away okay so that's causing a shadow Okay, let's take these. I'm going to put the wings. I'm actually going to put the wings in. Do I have a little pouch? Maybe we could grab a pouch. Oh, I made this a really long time ago. Some of you will know it. It's a Japanese star. It's a Japanese loop bag that slides in through there. I know you're very close, and I, I, it's cantha quilt. And I slow stitched the whole canther quilt and then made this thing. I can't even remember how I made it. But I carry my sewing projects around in it. Um, and I put all bits of, yeah. Of the, it, it's, I can't tell you how hard it is to stitch through the canther quilt. It's a nightmare. And it's reversible. This is the reverse side. I used this, one of my favourite hemp's. And I just did a, inspired by my mum. Because she was going through a phase where she stitched on crosses. And I had done that. Um, I think I might keep it on that side for a little bit. I never have it on that side. I'm going to put my bits in there. That's where everything's going to go, and I'm going to carry it around in that. So I'll put that aside. Okay, so I put the wings in there so I won't lose them. Well, I might lose them, but you never know. Okay, so we've got our threads, and I think I'm going to go with this, this tone here. Will I go with that one, or... I want to go with this one. I'm going to do all my flowers, those, these bigger flowers, one in each of those pinks. That's my thought. And I'll need to, I'll probably grab this chenille needle. This is the big fat chenille needle. Um, can't remember what number. I'm going to do, now with satin stitch, I wanted to do satin stitch, but with satin stitch, I don't, I don't think doing big long expanses of, um, stitches are good so like you know like that's a big stitch and it can become quite loose I think I might do short and long stitch and I just do my short and long stitch really it's now this is a bit flimsy this fabric so I could put it in a hoop but I'm not going to I'm just going to hold it like this short and long stitch so you do one long one and one short one 
In the smaller ones, I'll just do satin stitch, but in the long, the bigger leaves, I'll do short and long. And I just make it up, really. I don't do it properly. I just taught myself there's a bit of a gap there, but don't worry, we'll fill it in. And I'm not going to do them too tight. It's so relaxing. So then I come and meet this stitch. Pop up here. It also gives you a nice texture, the short and long stitch. I'm going to come down here and slip a stitch in there where I had the gap. That's what I mean, I don't do it properly and I could put just a little teeny tiny stitch in there as well because I can see that and that will annoy me. So I don't do it properly. If you want to look it up, you can look it up, short and long stitch and learn to do it properly. It's just really like colouring in. So here I'll do a long stitch along and do those just so you know we are working on and you know like a another Easter kit to go along with the other ones that we already have now that is too far away I'm also covering up that stain that is on the fabric which is good Now I come up next to my stitch so I don't um, waste my thread. So if you're not using a hoop and you have a flimsy fabric like this, just be careful you don't pull it too tight. I want to pull that stitch a bit more, but I'm just going to hold my make sure I hold my fabric. See, I can tell you what, mine are not even, I make it up. I like making things up, did you notice? I get great enjoyment out of it. I think winging it is just so much fun. Put another little stitch in there and then I'm going to come in and fill it in at the bottom. And I think they use this stitch quite a bit for what they call thread painting, where you use one strand. It takes a very long time. You use one strand and you and then you really and then you can change colour and you get that really like really um, blended shading happening in the in the stitching. What's her name? I can't remember the lady's name, but that she's Tony someone. I think she's called Tony. She she does these amazing birds. Can't remember her name. Now I need to fix up this little area here I'm not so happy with. I will just keep putting stitches in until it's done. I just slip them in there. I need a couple more stitches up here if you see a few gaps. There we go, look at that. Okay. So I'll end that off. So I'm going to do all the other petals like that. On this big flower. Let me have a look at the other flowers. 
So that's all going to be completed. This big flower is going to be completed with those, completed with those petals, um, those ty that type of stitching. Um, what have I drawn there? I won't do it all on camera. Then there's this one. This one I thought would be nice in this darker sort of colour. This brighter, sorry, brighter pink. Maybe I'll do that one in that one. Let's see what stitch I'll use on that one. A lot of pink. But then I'm going to do these flowers in a different colour, I think. And then I have to decide if I'm going to add anything else. So better get cracking, haven't I? I start. I didn't start that one in the middle. I probably should have. I'm going to do this one just satin stitch because it's not. It's on the borderline. Okay, so I whacked the thing. Um, I might struggle a bit with this big needle to do my next two. I might have to do the regular satin stitch like this come down here. So I'll be wasting a bit of thread, which I don't like, but anyway. Because these threads, um, they're precious to me. I don't, I can, well, I can buy them here, but I don't even know the numbers. I usually buy them in Australia. So I'm just doing satin stitch here. And you can see how quickly you can fill it in with using a wool. I'm going to put a little, another stitch in there because here, see that gap? I don't like that. So I'll just fill that in there. So I just, yeah, I'm going to do all my other petals in the similar fashion. The other flowers, because they're smaller than the big one. The big one's short and long stitch, and the smaller one's just satin stitch. Yeah, I like the texture. It's going to be really nice and textural. I just have to be careful up here with the... Um, not pulling my thread too tight because it is flimsy. I may have to resort to a hoop for there, but I don't want to. I have a little hoop that my mum gave me, but I've got to find it. Okay, so that's that one. That's going to be that colour. Um, this one I might do up here. And I might... I don't think I'm going to go darker. No, I'm not going to go dark. I'm going to do that one, and then I'm going to repeat the pale one up there. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, that's for those. Um, these, again, are going to be... Um, I think I might use this colour. That's pretty. I might just grab my butterfly. Keep your butterfly near if you're doing one like this. Just to see the colours. That's going to be there. That's that one. Where's the other? There it is. Just, uh, okay. Yes, I think I like that colour there. And I don't know, we might do something with that. Yeah, I think I'll do that one, that colour, but I might use this one over here and then down here do that one. And I might add more. I just don't know yet until I get them all embroidered. So I think I'll end my video here. I've got a bit of work to do um, before the week, ne the next week. Um, but don't worry, I will record as I go. But these, this bit here I won't record. But when I come to the centres and to my leaves, and I will, actually I'll show you now. I'm having a thought about how I'm going to do those. I wonder if I could thread this. I probably can. I'm not going to do, these are like, 
satin stitch straight up, okay? These I'm going to do satin stitch diagonally. So let me show you that before I go, and then I can continue on with those as well. And then I'll show you how I'm going to do the leaves. Yes, let's do that. Let me show you that what I'm going to do, and then and then I can go ahead and do it. And and then next week we'll have to finish off the butterfly. So and then it will be finished the piece. So here. Now another way to do satin stitches, you can outline here, and then bring your stitches over the outline, and that may, helps you make it neat. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Now diagonal. So I'm going to go across like this. Just gives it all a different direction. Mm, no, I can't do that. That method of stitching. I have to put in another stitch in there. So I don't mind doing satin stitch when I'm using these thick threads because it doesn't take quite as long to do. Lovely thread. I don't know, really don't know where I bought it from. And you can have a few needles threaded up so you can just keep changing your colours really easily. One more little stitch there to create the shape. And there you have it. So we're in a diagonal sort of direction, that one. Now... I'm not sure what I want to do with the leaves. I think with the leaves, so I will need to go on with this this week, so that way I can show you next week. With the, I haven't. Oh, there I'll just do. I'm not sure. I might do some hatching or something now. I'm not sure. We'll we'll have a look at that after. Not today, but another day. Let me get to my greens, which are here. Whoops, bashing into things I am. With the leaves, I think I might like to use, I'll do one in this colour. Oh, I don't have much there. Let's grab another one, see if I can thread it. Nope. Okay. Okay, so with the leaves, I've only got those two leaves drawn at the moment, and then I'll see where to put the rest. What I'm going to do is just this stitch. I'll put one stitch in there, and then I'm just going to work my way down, always coming in at the center. I'll do one side and then the other side. Let me double check, you can see. Might be off screen. Yep, so just work my way at an eight diagonal like that all the way down and then do the other side the exact same way. I'll just jump over and show you. I'll just fill it in backwards. I would start up there, but I'll just go this way just to show you quickly. 
gives you the idea of the center the vein in the center you could then go and stitch over that if you wanted to Oops, and I've caught my thing, so I'll have to unthread it. But you get the idea. You don't want to stitch your, your lace down anyway. I'll have to rethread that, and then, and that gives you the idea of the leaf. So that's how I'm going to proceed. I haven't decided on the centers. When I do the centers, I'll video that. Um, and then I will see you again next week. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope I've loved seeing all your blocks. Some of you are absolute whizzes and already finished. Um, it's going to be quite bright this one. So I'm really happy with it. So I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.